You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 2nd, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we've already voted, and we encourage you to do the same. Just get out and do it, people, and bring some people with you. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. It is time. It is time to get out the vote this weekend, folks. So do it. Do it. Hey, do hey. it. And this yeah. is a special episode. We're actually recording this on Sunday, October 28th, we are. because Drift Glass is going out of town uh, to visit Mama Drift Glass and his Drift Glass siblings. I am. And uh, that's going to be a nice visit. And I want to wish you a very happy birthday. This is well, thank you. the first time in a few years when you and I will be apart, period. Period. Yes, that's period, true. Period. But also on your birthday. So I know. Uh, I love you and I'll miss I love you. you too. I'll miss you I like hell. Terribly. But, and I've been I've I've been informed by the girls that you must return immediately. <laughs> when will, will you return? Life will get very hard for them if I'm not around. So <laughs> they are uh, they depend on you. They do. Yeah. And it's not yeah. just because mom is checked out doing blogging and podcasting and all kinds of other things most of the time. But it it really they love you a lot. So, yeah, no, you know, that's and it's, nice. And, you know, just don't. Just put gas in the car and don't get high. You know, that's pretty much the only <laughs> advice I have for the youngsters today in these days and times. And uh, we've already talked about the fact that uh, uh, I went out door knocking with with Junior Dude when he was here last weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did go out door knocking again. I'm door knocking as often as possible and I'm going to go out and to get out the vote. Um, you run into people in our town. It's like living in the Beltway, Blue Gal. <laughs> It really is. I feel like the Andrew Sullivan of Springfield, Illinois. Oh, Lord. Uh, except I'm not crazy and I don't write drivel for New York Magazine yet. Yet. <laughs> uh, but who did I run into today at the grocery store but the wife of my senator? Yes. Who knows me? I know her. And we chatted a bit and I told the cashier, watch out for this one. Check her ID. She's not to be trusted. <laughs> um, We're talking but- about Mrs. Durbin. Durbin. Yes. And uh and but she knows who I am and you know we serve on some committees together and we we know each other um pretty well. well. Like you, she is very committed to uh the community of Springfield yes. and and walks the talk. Yes. She's not a denizen up on, you know, Country Club Hill mm-hmm. being uh higher and mightier than everybody else. No, she no, no, no. she walks and Walks the streets and does the stuff hey, that needs. I don't mean walk. I don't mean she's a street walker. <laughs> walk I mean, that she knocks now. on doors for voting and she, she does. does. She, she really ra- does. She raises money and she she is there for uh, Democrats in the. And we were able to do a little, a little hip hip hooray because um, Betsy Dirksen Laundergren got the endorsement of the State Journal Register, which was in serious that's doubt because it's a Republican news. newspaper. Really, yeah, and that's big news. I mean, the, we I was on tender hooks about that. And I think the campaign was too, because I can tell you directly yeah. from from her mom that yes, <laughs> they they, well, they weren't on tender hooks, but they were really kind of like you know this is probably not going to happen because this is just the way politics are in this town, right? But he's just a really goddamn good candidate. And Rodney Davis, the key issue was this is what pisses me off about this paper. It it picked issues that it could differentiate between Republican candidates so that they could endorse. Uh, La Hood. Yeah, one Ray La Hood, co- which is bullshit. Yeah. But yeah. They, they basically said uh, the biggest ding on Rodney Davis wasn't health care, which he voted against and lied about repeatedly, which I have a real problem with. But it was access uh, by voters that he hides yeah. from his voters, hides from constituents. And she doesn't. Betsy doesn't. Right. She makes, you know, she she's out there shaking hands, talking to anybody who wants to talk to her. And her her town halls, which she has many of are a cross-section of every political persuasion, every Absolutely. color, every size. So that was their big deciding factor. And that is I, paper endorsements don't matter much. You know, every paper in the country except the ones owned by Sheldon Adelson endorsed Hillary Clinton and right. Donald Trump still won. Right. But in this particular town at this particular time, it actually is a big deal it is. for the hard right-leaning newspaper. That has uh, Ann Coulter syndicated. Yes. 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 It won't to, make their, to make their readers happy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big uh, deal. 
Yep, oh, that she, is a big deal. She got a second endorsement too, which is kind of a smaller one. But the, there's uh, the Illinois Times is a weekly liberal throwaway newspaper, except it's got really good articles and it's well written. It's also why I feel like I live in the Beltway because I'm sort of I know the reporters at these places, so I go, right. "Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Hey, there's the senator's wife. Hey, how's it?" Uh, it's like Jesus. Why? No, you just... you you underestimate how wired into this community you are. So but, that's okay, uh, Betsy. <laughs> But I just feel like it's a, a itty bitty miniature beltway where nothing, yeah. the stakes are very low. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, but they endorsed her as like leader on the rise. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So she everyone's a, watching this race nationally. Yeah. I think too because Rodney Davis is, uh, you know, Paul Ryan's toy poodle. Mm-hmm. You know that's what he is, and and they mentioned that kind of in the editorial too. That mm-hmm. he he's a foot soldier in an I think the the uh, St. Louis paper because this district goes all the way down to East St. Louis. Yeah, it's so St. Louis suburbs district. on on the border with we, we touch fourteen Missouri. counties, fourteen, 14 counties. different counties, yeah. and it's it's a gerrymandered district designed to be competitive for Democrats downstate, right. which is hard to do. But uh, the St. Louis paper endorsed Betsy Londrigan because they serve suburban Illinois, suburban St. Louis in Illinois, which is in this mm-hmm. district. Yeah. And they said that uh, something to the effect of Rodney Davis is a loyal foot soldier in an army that's marching in the wrong direction. Yes, yes he is. And I think that says it, you know, that, that this, this healthcare vote, we knew at the time when the African-American Congresswomen <laughs> sang, na, 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 hey, yep. hey, hey, goodbye. Yep right at that vote mm-hmm. that this was going to cost them. And I'm, yep. I'm not putting any eggs in my basket yet. No, no. Get out the vote, get out the vote, get out the vote and keep talking about healthcare because yes. that vote people. And, and I want to mention this too. There is so much PTSD yeah. this week. Yeah. You know, you brought that up this morning. I did. You know, we, and why we, I've been so kind of down and on edge for the past 24 hours. It's not yeah. just the slaughter of Jews on, on, my country's soil, no, which is enough to throw anyone off. Enough to just yeah. that's it. You you crawl under a desk despair. And you cry for a yeah, moment. despair. Right. Uh, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. But but the last election that that all of us were involved in was a disaster and a shock and a horrific experience. And so I'm sensing in my own body this. PTSD coming up of, oh, my God, it's election night again. What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. And my stomach's in knots about it. So mm-hmm. uh, and and I don't like the term self-care because I think it's turned into what can you yeah. buy and what can you Instagram and what can you display? I like squad care. Squad care. Take care of each yeah. other. Take, yeah. Take care of each yeah. other. Take care of each other. And talk you, to you each other. About that. Right. Yeah. It's not about photographing your fingernails and displaying that you know that's not what well, self-care is in my in my book um and, and we I'm, i didn't mean to interrupt go no, ahead no uh but so this ptsd that there but you know lodged in our hippocampus as, as <laughs> dr ford it's said is that night when our health care hung from john mccain's thumb and it was only him voting no that prevented republicans from taking away health insurance from millions of Americans, tens of millions, and tens yeah, and if yep. if if we allow them to con- to lie about that and get away with it, this country's in trouble anyway. But yeah. it's in bigger trouble, in trouble if we just let the, that lie stand. It is a lie, and I love that tweet that said, "You know, um, the American media is learning to say lie. Now yeah. try racism, <laughs> because." Yeah. Yeah. What's happening today, uh, there's a post at Crooks and Liars. This is Sunday, and we're going to have it at the top of the page Monday. And please go look for it on Twitter. Uh, We are now calling, and a lot of people are calling, for a boycott of advertisers of Fox News. It is finally time to say that. They have done this Soros globalism, Jewish conspiracy dog whistle about the caravan well, they've been doing that general one for years. And they, this they've caravan been doing this thing is just globalism crap for yeah. years. But yeah. they've they've tied, you know, the the work of George Soros, as I said last week, the work of George Soros to help refugees in general. That is one of his pet projects to help refugees. 
It's not a sinister plot to overthrow no. American sovereignty. It is no. to help refugees. And it is a person who has refugees in his family. blood and history yes. and knows what it's like to be a displaced person. Right, right. Um, helping people who are in the worst possible position you can be. Yeah. And and Fox News has taken that good work and uh, painted it as an evil thing. And in a way that is uh, not just a dog whistle, but an air horn, as they say, no. uh, of, uh, you know, the the international Jewish conspiracy to overthrow American sovereignty, TM, TM. And mm -hmm. uh, they keep doing it. And they've kept doing it after uh, Jews were slaughtered on American yeah. soil. Because they, they, they can't stop. Right. There's no, there's no right. place else for them to go. Right. There's no other place for that ideology to go but down. Right, right. And, and um, it, is, it is time to say, you know, we can make a case for Fox News lying, and there's a whole cottage industry of blogs set up to do that. You know, John mm -hmm. Stewart made a decades, decade long TV <laughs> show about Fox News <laughs> lying, pointing at he Fox did. News and saying they're lying. Uh, and that hasn't gotten us anywhere because the lie sells. And so right. uh, the lie is is what people want to hear, certain of certain age and certain ethnicity want to hear. And so advertisers don't care because it's money. They pay for it. And they pay for it. And, and now it's time to admit that places, and I'm, I'm tweeting, at, tweeting to these companies and saying, mm -hmm. if you think I'm not serious about a boycott of advertisers, you need to be aware that I have boycotted Home Depot since 2005 <laughs> because yep. they funded George Bush's central second inaugural. She has. She's and I serious. don't I don't cross the threshold. And I know some people have absolute zero choice if they want to paint their house. As far as shopping for paint, they can't go anywhere else in their community. But uh, if you can go somewhere else, you can order online. Don't shop there. I'm just going to say it. Don't shop there. They're a right wing owned uh, company and uh, your money doesn't need to go to that. No. So uh, this is, um, it's time. It's now time to stand up against racism and mm -hmm. racist dog whistles and racist uh, air, air horns mm -hmm. and uh, boycott the advertisers of Fox news. And, and, and this yeah. is the thing that is, is most, um, Interesting to watch and depressing and thrilling in a lot of ways um, is watching how watching people who really never wanted to believe it would come to this mm -hmm. finally mm -hmm. catching up to where liberals were 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I remember vividly uh, people on liberal talk radio that I like and listen to just drawing the line at boycotting anybody about anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because, well, yeah, sure, Rush Limbaugh is a monster and he's destroying America. But you got to understand the people who sell dick pills on his show sell dick pills on my show. And if we start boycotting them, they're going to say, well, it just I don't want to I want to avoid all controversy. Right. All politics. And it take, right. And it'll take money out of my pockets. And the answer is, yeah, it will. Guess what? It will. Bus boycotts are not fun. Mm -hmm. They mean you have to walk. Right. But let me just say that I was out door knocking this weekend. Uh, and I had many bold and fascinating experiences and depressing ones. But there was this woman on a porch, African American woman, probably in her in her fifties or sixties, uh, and I just I walked up, and she wasn't the person I was supposed to talk to. They were all gone, but she was just there, sort of watching the house with her young male friends, I think probably nephews and nieces, and asked her if she was going to vote. And it was like, oh, holy hell yeah! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like great, and we had a, like a twenty minute chat. Mm -hmm. But she was she mixed Jesus and voting. Wow! And she was really very clear. Look, I of course I vote. Of course I vote. And I vote Democrat. And you know why? Because my my father and mother and grandfathers bled and died so I could have the right to vote. Yep. And she was – and talking to her was – was I didn't need the reminder, but everybody needs the reminder. But this is a long game for some people. Yep. That – you know yep. what? The Civil War never ended for a whole bunch of people in this mm -hmm. country. It just went underground for a while and everybody looked the other way. But this is a long, long, long struggle. And she, her, she was pissed off the Democrats weren't a little more, you know, a lot more uh, uh, feisty, mm -hmm. uh, didn't swing harder, and were, were pissed at the young people with their goddamn phones. Yeah, you know, cause she, right. And, and I, I, we talked about the Voting Rights Act. I said, I have friends in Springfield who, who are educated, well-intentioned well people who are Democrats, who have no idea the Voting Rights Act was gutted. 
And she says, uh-huh. And what mm-hmm. they're doing to people in Georgia, that's sin. That's a sin. Uh, that's a sin. Throw it, it, stopping buses full of full of African Americans and tell them they can't go because something 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 tossing people off the voting rolls for for no she and she knew the whole thing yeah of course she so this did is poor yeah. this is a woman on a porch in a poor neighborhood who knew everything I know and of course twice as much as I know and that gave me a whole lot of hope because she plans to haul her <laughs> this is the nephews to the polls because she she understands how how long this struggle has been going on yep. And how late some of us are to it. Yep. Yep. And so I just, you know, she wished me a blessed day and I wished her vice versa. Uh, but I wanted to say, uh, I, I, I won't dwell on PTSD because we talked about Aristotle at church and I won't, <laughs> won't recapitulate <laughs> yes, that here. Did. Uh, but maybe at the end of the podcast, I'll do the, the dramaturgy part. I of wish it. you'd do it now because it's so much okay. easier to edit. <laughs> Thank right. you. Well, fair enough. That Aristotle, the, the theory of, of tragedy, uh, Greek tragedy, according to Aristotle, was the social good from tragedy comes from um, all tragedy contains pity and terror. You know, you feel sorry for the person, you feel sad for them, and you, f- you feel afraid. And those are the emotions that are that are riled up, that are brought to the surface in tragedy. But at the end of the tragedy, at the end of the play, there is catharsis. Mm-hmm. There, is a, there is a purging of those emotions. And that's socially good because people leave the theater having cried and gotten angry and gotten upset. But at the end of the show, the curtain closes – and the emotions are purged, and it's socially good, and it's good drama. The problem we have in this country is we have pity and terror, but no catharsis. Mm-hmm. There's, there's been no catharsis. There's, been, there's no end to this. There's no end to it. Every day you get up, it's like, when will this be over? And you look at television, or you listen to the radio, or you go online, it goes, holy shit, it's just getting worse. And the people who are making it worse are smirking and laughing and loving every fucking minute of it. Mm-hmm. And people are, are, are people are mailing bombs across the country and those people just shrug. And people are shooting up synagogues. They go, not, so what? I had nothing to do with that. And you just look at them and go, what species are you a part of that you don't see this? Mm-hmm. What What is wrong with you? And, and the thing is, and this is sort of getting to the theme of this show, which is what I hope will make it timeless. Um, is it's not one set of brainwashings that we are caught in. We're caught in a pincer movement between two kinds of brainwashing. The Fox News, I voted in favor of uh, of, of protecting pre-existing conditions from a bunch of people who fucking well know they didn't, who are just straight up looking in the camera and lying and lying and lying and lying every day because they know the meatheads who vote for them are brain dead and will believe it because that's what they've been programmed to do. That's one set of brainwashing that's making us all crazy. The other set of brainwashing is Chuck Todd looking in the same camera going, well, it really is both sides. Mm -hmm. Really, the problem in this country is both sides. What do you think, Eric Erickson, who for some fucking reason he put on the Sunday shows today? And that brings us to the theme of our show. That's just malpractice. That is just journalistic malpractice. That's all on on a day, on a weekend when Jews were slaughtered on American soil. It's it is a it is a it is a crime that that is allowed to continue to be put on television and masquerade as news because right. it's not. Yeah. It is both – and now both of these groups are are up against it yep. because yep. N- they, but they, yeah. they, they're interdependent. They're codependent. Yeah. But the more crazy the right gets and that, again, they have no place else to go but down, the more ridiculous and hysterical – and desperate, the centrist, the both siders, the what about is become because that's their only line. That's their only product. Their only brand is the left and the right are equally bad. The left and the right are equally uh, 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 vicious. The left and the, and you get to the point where Hugh Hewitt is on television saying someone yelling at Mitch McConnell is the same as someone mailing bombs, right? With a fucking straight face. Yep. And 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 no one comes with a hook and drags him off and says that's it, you're done. We don't put crazy people on television anymore. Right. But they do because they don't have any choice. And that leads us to our, our main theme of today. Our, our special. This is our special podcast in preparation for the midterm elections. Yes. And we're going to go through our list. Uh, this is a list that I've compiled. And yeah. you are welcome to write us or tweet us and or on, visit our Facebook page and add to it. But this is our both sides don't list. And what's the official uh, hashtag of the Professional Left Podcast? Hashtag both sides don't, and you got to leave off the apostrophe and don't. I know that's That's a quote unquote misspelling, but hashtags don't allow apostrophes. That's Twitter's fault. (laughs) And so, yeah, so we're going to go through and talk about both sides don't uh, for an entire episode because it's that Mm -hmm. important. And uh, thank you, Driftglass, for putting it in that perspective. Do you want to go left to right or top to bottom? Top to bottom. 
and right. and start with one of the biggies, uh, which yep. is both sides don't pass voter suppression laws. Nope, that they don't. Is if if you get to one sentence out at Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> mm-hmm. I suggest that one. Both sides yeah. don't stop black people from, and student, college students from voting. They yeah. just don't. They just don't. Yep. And that's just a fact. Yep. Uh, both sides don't have Orly Tates as a driver of their politics for years or a so-called president who got his start on political TV as a birther. Let's all remember, people, that every time you see some whinging, centrist, both uh, uh oily douchebag on television – whining about why don't we have a leader who can bring us together? Why don't we have a uniter instead of dividers? Why don't we have a calm, rational, sane, scandal-free person who wants to compromise, who doesn't care about the, the, the taking bows, just wants to fix problems? What you're, what you're missing there, what they're doing to your brain is they're putting that person on the air and they're deliberately restricting the ability of someone like me or a million other liberals to sit across from them and say, wait one fucking minute. You had that for eight years. You had it. It was Barack Obama. He's the perfect centrist president. He's everything you said you wanted. And the Republican Party fucked with him and fucked with him and shut the government down and called him everything but a child of God and attacked his wife. And there was never any a moment when he could do anything right. And it was lie after lie after lie after lie reported in the news as if, well, that's just how politics are today. And every time, every time liberals did nothing, why won't Obama lead? Right. And every time he pushed back after four or five years, started pushing back, it's why must both sides be so bitter? Right. And and at some point you have to realize there's no winning this game if you play the game their way. Right. So what happened after eight years of of kicking this this decent, honorable man in the balls every goddamn day because he was black, because he was a Democrat? Republicans nominated the king of the birthers and elected him. Mm-hmm. The guy who Period. insisted that that the first black president had to show his papers and his college transcript. Yeah, because yeah. of course he couldn't have written those books because black people aren't smart. Right. Right. And and uh-huh. I, I I wanted to add to your uh, drama. Uh, yeah. conversation that uh, we thought we had our catharsis in 2008 yeah. when Barack we Obama did. was elected. We thought, we okay, did. we're actually getting somewhere in this country. And it was inauguration day that Republicans like Newt Gingrich and Paul Ryan went to a steakhouse in Washington, D.C. and plotted against the government of the United States. Yes. How can we destroy this man's How presidency? How can we destroy the presidency? How can we rebuild our party by destroying Barack Obama? And we need to just resist everything he does. Which brings us to number three. Number three. Both sides don't filibuster their own bills to ensure that Obama had zero accomplishments. And Mitch McConnell did that. Did that. And and they, and they talked about it. They laughed about it. Yeah. I mean, you had Republicans saying, yeah, I had to block my own bill. I had to filibuster my own bill because... The leadership says this guy gets nothing. Right. And this guy gets nothing. And Barack Obama said he'd sign it. Barack Obama said he'd right. compromise with me and sign my bill. We can't have that. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Number four, both sides don't look back on the day their House of Representative members gave Rush Limbaugh a plaque and called him the majority maker, which was, drum roll please, a quarter of a century right. ago. This didn't happen last week. This didn't happen last month. One of the things that's both, again, uh, thrilling and incredibly depressing is that uh, we mentioned this last week on the podcast. The things we were saying 10 or 15 years ago were so outside. We're so uh, uh, completely um, uh, verboten, uh, uh, a taboo. You simply couldn't talk about the Republican party being the problem at all ever. Um, now Steve Kornacki has got a goddamn book where he says, you know what? Newt Gingrich is pretty much the start of the modern Republican Party, right. and it's sitting on bookshelves, and it's it's uh, for sale at our local bookstore. I'm glad that now that it's far, 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 far too late to do anything about it, uh, people in the media are noticing that uh, this is yeah. true. It boils me that they don't acknowledge the second half of that thought, which is, oh, my God, liberals were right all along. Right. Both sides don't hold private bill drafting sessions behind closed doors regarding our nation's National health insurance system, not national health insurance, but our nation's health insurance system, and exclude from that meeting women and people of color. 
all white men sitting around a table deciding who's going to have health insurance and what that health insurance is going to cover. And Mm -hmm. of course, they had zero ideas about how to actually cover everybody. It was about making donors happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also want to add to that, that uh, when we get past all of this and start talking about actually fixing our nation's health care system again, please remember that Obamacare was the compromise. Yes. That, and from now on, there is no compromise beyond covering everybody. That's it. No. The, the Obamacare was the cobbled together um, Rube Goldberg compromise right. that Barack Obama took from the Heritage Foundation yep. and, and said, well, the, they have to compromise. Oh, this is their own goddamn plan. Right. I mean, this is Mitt Romney's plan. This is Romney care. And they ran in circles and screamed about death panels and birthers. And, oh, my God, the black man's trying to kill my grandmother. And 40 million meatheads who get their facts out of Rush Limbaugh's ass believed them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they all they all put on funny hats and became tea partiers. Mm-hmm. And that's a different story for a different day. Both sides don't push alternative facts, i.e. the Bowling Green Massacre and 3 million illegal voters swinging the election in California and Pizzagate. Or have a president engage in Twitter fights about hurricane death tolls. Both sides don't need a no labels movement or a Tea Party rebranding to get past their latest president's failures. No, no. Democrats are have been Democrats for as long as I can remember. It is only Republicans who every seems like every seven to ten months shed their skin and suddenly become something new. Why we're constitutional conservatives. Well, we're libertarians. We're libertarian conservatives. We're conservo libs. Uh, it would be we're interesting. Democrats. It would be interesting to go back to the 70s and look at the Est movement as possibly being a reaction to Nixon. And we're just gonna oh. go inward now and work on ourselves. Yeah. You know. Actually the the uh the century of the self. Yeah. That um that that uh documentary yes. does exactly that. Oh good. It was after the hippie movement failed, uh, they decided to go internal yeah. and focus on themselves. And they found and, – and advertisers said, great, we have a whole bunch of new consumers who want to define themselves by their products. Yeah. And then they said, you know what the big problem with, with finding – doing self-discovery and self-actualization is getting – getting barriers out of your way. You know what the worst barrier to self-actualization is? Government. The government. Right. And that's how okay. hippies turn into um, – anyway, it's a whole horrible – Supply siders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Both sides don't think dynamic scoring is a thing or the tax cuts for billionaires will grow the economy to 4% or really do anything except create giant deficits, which will be then used as a predicate to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Correct. Both sides don't make up fake rules to prevent a qualified Supreme Court nominee from having a hearing, let alone a vote. Right. That's good God. Both sides don't have the majority in both houses and the presidency and no legislative accomplishments in the first 200 days but five guilty pleas five and counting both sides don't refer to human beings as illegals or use dog whistles like monkey around globalism and george soros yeah that's a real short list for a whole bunch of racism the republican party just engages in every day the the, yep. the language of hate and division and really psychotic contempt for everyone who isn't them is their vocabulary it's just normal. And this is what freak this is why both siderism is such a pernicious disease. Because the both siderists, the people inside the bubble, the, the the Chuck Todd's and the David Brooks's and the rest of them have been soaking in it so long they don't hear it anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just normal. Mm-hmm. Well, if everyone knows Newt Gingrich is a monster, let's put him on television and ask him a question about deficits. No, let's yeah. not put monsters on television. Let's start there. And and it, it doesn't occur to them that that would ever be a thing you would do like Only put responsible people who don't spit in your face and lie to you on television to speak to millions of people. And that's why our media is broken beyond repair. The thing that 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 infuriates me so much, too, is that so much of this racism is from, pardon the expression, white trash. Yeah. (laughs) Who's... Refugee ancestors came here as indentured servants because they couldn't afford the boat fare across the Atlantic. Yeah. And they were penniless refugees, many of whom did not speak English. If you look at the, I mean, I have studied American history since high school. You used to teach it. I used to teach it. Mm-hmm. You look at the number of foreign language newspapers for refu- for, for immigrants 
in the colonial period, in the 19th century, in the early 20th century. First generation Americans did not learn English. They just didn't. That that was their kids and grandkids who learned English and became English speaking, you know, and then became policemen and then became mayors. And, and there's this whole saga of how Italians and Germans and and the Irish, and the Irish. speak English. Let's not forget the, the Irish. Irish. Mm -hmm. You know, but but I've said it before. You know, Benjamin Franklin didn't want Germans moving to Philadelphia in the colonial period because they didn't speak English. They took all the good jobs, right? And they, he didn't like their complexion. They were smelly and untrustworthy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they weren't white enough. They weren't white enough mm -hmm. for Benjamin Franklin's Philadelphia. Well, and so, if, you, if you take a a uh, uh, a uh, time machine and sit it in the middle of Chicago. You can watch mm -hmm. wave after wave of immigrants all following the same path. They all follow sort of the right. angled streets, the Pulaski streets, right um, out into the suburbs, right. Uh, but they all arrive in the same place. They all set up a shop in the neighborhood. The last immigrant group is now leaving. Mm -hmm. And they set up mm -hmm. their own businesses, and they, and it smells beautiful and wonderful. And there's all kinds of new amazing food. And the the older immigrants have now moved to the bungalows or moved to the suburbs and they moved into power and they now have their own alderman. And now that right. they're mayor, that's the way it goes. And yep. as someone said on Twitter today, you know, there's a, a caravan coming from Ireland full of immigrants who plan to overstay their visa. It's called an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Absolutely. And and people who talk about illegals don't realize just how wide the immigration system is and how many different kinds of immigrants are here proving every day that our immigration system is utterly broken. And it's broken because we don't let enough people in legally. Absolutely. Yep. And that's the problem. That is the, and that's because of racism. And why does so, all why does all this stay this way? Because both sides don't use ginned up congressional investigations and billionaire funded dark money 501c3 judicial watch lawsuits as mission critical election tools. Right. To primary Republicans as well as defeat Democrats. Right. That is absolutely the truth. And this is this is I gotta give it to them. They thought this through. They, they did said, long how, term. What's the most long efficient game. way of destroying democracy in America? And they have gone – they have made a war on every front and they've gotten away with it because there are a whole bunch of billionaires who are sick and tired of the government telling them what to do. Right. And, and they're they willing will to – funnel money into it and they will, to make it not work for them. And they yeah. will make an alliance with any group who hates the government. And that government yeah. – that includes wingnuts, bigots, imbeciles, uh, anti-science fundamentalists, gun nuts, militia nuts, homophobes, all the hateful lunatics – have one thing in common. They hate the government because the government keeps them from doing what they want to do to those groups, throw them out, abuse them, um, uh, treat them like shit, uh, discriminate against the workforce, uh, generally run through the streets screaming N-word, N-word, N-word to no consequence. That's why they hate the government. And there are a bunch of billionaires who are like, yeah, okay, let's harness all these assholes and put them to work tearing down the government so that I don't have to pay any goddamn taxes. Right. That's the long, right. that's the game. That's the game. And speaking of destroying the government, mm -hmm. both sides don't vote to confirm the most unqualified secretary of education in American history. Mm -hmm. Also the HUD secretary, also the secretary of energy, also the secretary of the treasury, also the commerce secretary, on and on and on. Yeah, you can go right down but the list. These were these were confirmed by the Republican Senate. Yeah. Both sides don't need a political lifeboat after Trump is kicked out of office i.e. Trumpism isn't republicanism. I'm an independent constitutional conservative. Everybody say it together. Yeah. I'm an independent. I'm an independent. And I'm. let's add that they don't just need a political lifeboat after Donald Trump uh, blows up. These are the same right. people who, who created a lifeboat after uh, the Clinton thing blew up in their face. This is the same people who, who rebuilt the lifeboat after the Bush administration collapsed. These are the same people who rebuilt that same lifeboat uh, after the Obama administration uh, started succeeding, they, they're the same people. I, I, I pulled a post from a decade ago. Same people, same exact people who were looking for a way out of the Bush administration. They had supported so vociferously and they just reinvented language. They reinvented their title. They went right on believing what they believed. And the only way to stop them is to stop them from boarding the lifeboat, to burn the lifeboats. You cannot the let... Lifeboats. This is, yep. I, I, I really feel like there are a couple of never-Trumpers who I could get along with. But in the main, all they are doing is trying to avoid the righteous hammer of history from dropping on their heads. Right. They're doing it 
by finding credulous liberals who are willing to forgive them on our behalf and let them escape uh, paying any price, any penance, any penalty. Uh, these and these are all for their, for their shitty policies. For the Republican policies. policies are terrible, and their shitty yes. behavior. People who work yeah. really hard to produce really horrible ads to elect really shitty people for a really long time and made a lot of money doing it. Who wrote speeches for them? Who did their thinking for them? Who put words in their mouth? And now are running around with their hands flapping around, going, "Oh my God, the Republican Party is full of Republicans." When did that ever happen? You know, if you want right. to, if you, if that's how you live with yourself. If that's the lie you have to tell yourself so you don't, you know, put stones in your pockets and walk into the lake, that's fine. But get the fuck off of television and quit trying to sell me a book that's that's consists of <laughs> liberal podcasts and liberal posts from 15 years ago. We're on yeah. to your shit. And I know that you'll find a bunch of weak-willed liberals who will help you pimp your book because it, it promotes – what does it promote, Blue Gal? What does it promote? Both sides. Both sides. Is there, the, the book – at the core of these books, it's, you know, isn't it a shame – that I had to do all these things because it's because liberals are so awful because liberals are so oh. bad. Now, of course, the, the Republicans don't are, get me started because Mika Brzezinski is doing that all week long. Of course long. she is. Of course she is. But yeah. the the yeah. this the heart of it is I didn't either had no idea the Republican Party was full of Republicans or I did mm -hmm. what I did because liberals were just so awful. And finally, yep. it got the, the pendulum swung just a little too far this time, and I have to because I'm a righteous, decent man. I have to go write a book and go on television and tell people about how I just learned the Republican Party is full of Republicans two minutes ago. And it's, yep. it's all the same lie. And this is why people who challenge that lie are not allowed on television. <laughs> <laughs> Both sides don't nominate Callista Gingrich, a six-year mistress of a thrice-married con man, as ambassador to the Vatican. Yeah. They also, both sides don't nominate Lana Marks to serve as the United States ambassador to South Africa. What are her qualifications? She is a handbag designer who happens to be a paying member at Mar-a-Lago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, corruption is uh, ramp rampant over at that Trump White House. Mm -hmm. And uh, both sides don't nominate those kind of people to these kind of offices. Yeah. All right. And and. It is just uh, maddening to watch the same people who s told us that there was nothing going on inside the Republican Party to worry about all these years. Mm -hmm. Now, flailing around, hoping someone else will show up to put an end to this. Make yeah. it stop. Yeah. Someone, someone's got to do something about this. Well, you have a billion-dollar media company. I, I, this is a comment I made to Joe Scarborough just the other day. He wanted to know uh, why the hell Lou Dobbs – uh, was saying this shit that he was saying. I, I, and I, you know, what's wrong with him? Why, why is he getting away with this? What's what's going on over there? And my response was, if only you had a billion dollar media news division <laughs> at your disposal uh, that you could dispatch some reporters over and figure this shit out. But no, really, all you have, Joe, is sitting on Twitter bitching about it. That's, that's, that's the extent of your power. And the same people who flail around, or are now flailing around begging someone to come and make the madness stop are exactly the same people who the minute Democrats show up to put the fire out, will be bitching about the fire hose is too short and you're not sharing it. And how can we not do this? They will begin bitching about how we save their ass again the minute the tide turns. And you know, and they those people have to go. Yep. I mean, the, we, we, the last time we put the fire hose on the Republican fires that were burning and we didn't reserve enough energy to say, we have to clean out the... Aegean stables, the shitty stables at ABC, NBC, CBS, and CNN, yeah. and MSNBC. Yeah. Because these people are the carriers of this disease. And unless these people are all collectively suffer incredible professional setbacks for being enablers, this is going to happen again and again, and it'll be worse next time. You think Trump is bad? Remember how bad you thought Bush, Bush was? Yeah. It can never get any worse It can than never that. get worse than George W. Bush, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? Here's how you make it worse. Let everyone who enabled George Bush get away with get it. Get away with it. Yep. Yep. And that's and, why we will not allow anyone to call this Trumpism. These are Republican no. voters, Republican primaries. Trump won Republican primary after Republican primary and got more Republican primary votes than any other candidate in history. He, he did. He flicked that switch. He repeated Fox News talking points, which made Republicans, Republican base voters say, he's saying what I'm thinking. 
Mm-hmm. Of course he's saying what you're thinking. You Everything you're thinking is regurgitated right out of Sean Hannity's pile. And that's what Donald right. Trump is saying. So, yeah, yes. he's saying what yeah. you're thinking. Sure. Quote, unquote, think. And, and, yes. And everyone else on that stage did it reluctantly or cringingly or half-heartedly or, or you know, or you could see the venom dripping off of their teeth over some issues. Donald Trump played the whole pipe organ. Right. He played every key. He told them every lie they wanted to believe. He behaved like the giant asshole they all wanted to be. He swaggered up and down the stage. He insulted everyone in his path. He called everybody. He was an open, out, loud, proud racist like they are. And they loved him for it because yeah. all this time they've been told in public, don't act this way. And in private, it's cool that you act this way. We love you for it. And finally, the guy came along and said, well, take the mask off. Right. These guys, these asshole, every asshole on the stage has been telling you in secret, it's okay to be a racist, paranoid lunatic. It's okay to be an asshole. It's okay to hate liberals. It's okay to bash women. It's okay to grab them by the pussy. Oh, that's okay in private. Well, if they're going to, why not just do it in public? Right. What are you so ashamed of? This is who we are. Let's be proud of it. And that's what the MAGA assholes were waiting for. Right. Not some policy shift, not the latest edition of Edmund Burke. To turn them around. They were waiting for someone to come along to synchronize their external appearance with their internal reality. To say bigoted misogyny, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. Speaking of which, both sides don't let grab them by the pussy stand so they can get their tax cuts for the rich. Yeah. You know, and, and some of them weren't going to look their children in the face again because they couldn't no. possibly do that and support Donald Trump. And all of a sudden they could. Now they work on Fox News. Now they work on Fox News and defend Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh-huh. We call we what do we call that? We call that cruising. Cruising. C R U Z. Cruising. Uh-huh. Cruising is making yourself a footstool. Oh, speaking of which, I do want to bring up the fact that uh, Governor Hedge Fund yes. made his way to Murfreesboro <laughs> he, yesterday. He was cruising yesterday. Yes. You know he had all his bling on. He had his MAGA hat on. It was a it was a blue MAGA hat. It was so very fashionable. And he had his all, all his his uh, NASCAR patches on. And he just looked like the most forlorn creature out there. He motorcycled down to Southern Illinois, which is the only place Donald Trump will appear, is at an yeah. airplane hangar in deep Southern Illinois, where he, he won by 20 percent. Yeah, where he won yeah. by 20 percent. And that is uh, Axios reports today that that's the only place he's touring is uh, congressional districts where he won by 20 percent. He yeah, does not he want any uh massive protest against him. He does not want to be anywhere where the protest is bigger than his crowd. And so for the next for the next week. Yeah. If they lose, I'm saying if yeah. because then I have to if I don't, then I have to go outside and turn around three <laughs> In times. The snow, In the snow. Yes. In the snow. Um but he doesn't want the stank of Republican losses on him. He can say everywhere I campaign they won. Right. Right. Everywhere I campaign, they did great. So maybe the problem isn't me, but the problem is you. No. But yeah, Governor Rauner, who uh, – Governor Hedge Fund, uh, who's, who's – his opponent has now made an ad out of his being questioned by a reporter about do you support Donald Trump? And he just won't answer the question. No, and it's answer. so embarrassing. And now oh, my God. Now he's got to go and be a guest at uh-huh. an event where Donald Trump is. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty sad. He's going to lose. To I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb drift class. And yeah. say that uh, Governor Hedge Fund is going to lose re-election. Yeah. All right. Both sides don't look the other way. While their presidential nominee shows no interest in their party's platform except the Ukraine plank. Yeah. Please yeah. remember that about the Republican National Convention uh, in 2016. Just so you know, this is a, a list of a, a selected curated list that could be 100 times longer. Yes, it could. Uh, but this is these are just the highlights. Uh, Tucker Carlson's show is the evening news for only one party. Both sides don't do that. Right. Right. Both sides don't. This is this is getting to near the end. Both sides don't have Donald Trump as their standard bearer, folks. And uh-huh. he bears their standard. Remember that. Don't not, you dare call it Trumpism. It is not, not Trumpism. It is the Republican Party. And he is their standard bearer. And they love him. They love him. They love him. Yeah, remember, Donald Trump did not destroy the Republican Party. Donald Trump destroyed the Beltway's illusion of the Republican Party. Yeah. And because they have no place else to go, they need to keep pretending that illusion is real. And in order to make that illusion real in their own little cloistered, walled off, terrified community, the way they do that is by both sides. 
There's both sides. There must be this reasonable center out there. There must be these reasonable Republicans out there. They just can't find them anywhere. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. That just means they haven't looked hard enough. Why don't you read the last one, Drift Glass? Both sides don't push the both sides are equally bad memes. That makes Republicans look better. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. As as our friend uh, Rick Perlstein said on on the radio show before he was thrown off. (laughs) I don't think he was thrown off. When you tell the both sides do it lie, you structurally advantage the side that lies. That's right. That's right. Because every what what do Republicans want most of all? To make liberals cry and just destroy faith in government, destroy public institutions, and destroy the federal government. Crash it all, smash it all, burn it all down. Democrats don't want any of that. But every time a Republican commits an atrocity and some radio commentator or columnist or respected public intellectual or television person looks at a Republican atrocity and says, isn't it a shame how our institutions are broken? Isn't it a shame how Republicans and Democrats are equally bad? All that does is load up their cannon. Because at, what 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 do you want, man? Republicans, are, they're right. All of our institutions suck. Everyone's equally bad. Everyone's equally destructive. I have yet to have an encounter with a Republican who's who I have whose uh, conspiracy theories I've debunked over the last 20 years, who has not in the final extreme gone to that as an alibi. Right. Right. They never learn. They never admit they're wrong. They never stop going back to the poison well for more water. What do they do at the last minute when it's clear that they have humiliated themselves in front of the liberals? It's, well, you know, both sides do it. You know, liberals do it too. You know, everybody does it. Everything's wrong. Everything's bad. Everything's broken. Everything sucks. Well, that's what Republicans believe. And they want to make that reality into your world. Democrats believe everybody should have health care. Yeah. You know, it's really that yeah. simple. And and those two worldviews are not compatible with each other. They cannot be made compatible. There's no way to unify people who think the government should be destroyed and everyone but them sucks with a worldview that says everyone should have a decent job and clean water and clean air and decent health care. Yeah. And the no retirement that they two... paid into all their lives should be their retirement. Yes. Yeah. Right. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Max. Max knows that there is no such thing as a pillow for humans. They are all his pillows to protect his beautiful, long, luxurious fur. Max's pillows are not to be confused with that pillow that advertises on Laura Ingram's show. Max agrees with the Fox News advertiser boycott. You can visit Max at our Facebook page and website and send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Driftglass will be checking his email on the road. I will. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, and and think of us when you're doing that. Oh wow, I'm yeah. I'm getting a, a latte. Maybe I should send five bucks to the Professional Left Podcast. Mm-hmm. If you can afford to do that, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website proleftpod.com for details. We have PayPal, Patreon, GoFundMe a postal address, and merch, including Both Sides Don't t-shirts and bumper stickers. We do. At our website, at our Zazzle page. Absolutely go there. You can get one. They say Both Sides Don't on there. Mm-hmm. ProLeftPod.com. Go there. Go there now. <laughs> and please share our show on Facebook or Twitter. And thank you so much for doing that. I'm going to miss you, Drift Glass. I'm going to miss you too, baby. I love you. Love you, darling. I, let's just assume I had a great birthday. And uh, Hey, everybody. Thank you for uh, everything you sent to Drift Class for his birthday. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue gal, the Internet Kitties know damn well that both sides don't. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. 
Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.